and welcome to Kayla's World. I'm Kayla Canoe, author, YouTuber, gamer, and aerialist. And today's video is all about reflecting on 2020. So it is definitely that time of year to kind of plan for the next year and look back on how the last year went. And so um, this, this time around, I'm going to be doing two separate videos. So this video is just going to be all about reflecting on this past year because, oh man, so many things happened. Um, and then next week's video, I will actually go through with my planning for 2021. Um, so without any further ado, let's look back at 2020. So I looked back at my video um, on my plans and goals for 2020. I have my list of what my goals were for 2020. Um, and I'm going to just like briefly go through them and kind of see like what I actually did, what I didn't do, and all of the other craziness stuff that happened. Um, so first one on my list was to exercise five to seven times a week, which I did. Um, even during the whole COVID shutdown, I got out and I went for walks basically daily. So yeah, exercise achieved. I have kept that as a priority and that will continue to be a priority um, indefinitely in the future, hopefully. Um, the second one was also, uh, exercise related and it was, sorry, my cat really wants to be on the lap. Um, it was for my aerial stuff. So if you guys don't remember, I'm an aerialist, uh, and I was working on doing aerial inverts and bent arm, bent arm hangs. Um, and right before COVID happened, and the gyms closed, I actually did achieve an aerial invert. It was not pretty, but I did it. And I think I did a couple of them. Um, unfortunately, I lost that because COVID and no longer strength training and no longer aerial training because of that. Um, so I did lose that aerial invert, but I am kind of hanging on to that bent arm hang that I achieved. So kind of a 50-50 toss up on that one. Um, and then there's Lyra inverts, which obviously that I lost completely. Um, now into some writing related, um, goals that I had for the year, uh, finished, finished the second draft of the reckoning, um, which is not what I have it called on here. I have it called intertwined version three. Um, but it was to finish that second draft of the reckoning, which I did. I did that. So good on me. And then it says to read through and do developmental edits which I also did, although when I wrote this goal, I don't think I quite understood what exactly that meant. We'll go more into that later. Um, number four, grow YouTube channel, which I did. I really started focusing on doing my videos once a week, and I have remained consistent with that. And as you guys know, I'm now doing live streams and videos, so now we're posting twice a week, and we're going to see how that goes. Um, Goal number five, develop a publishing plan, which includes marketing, professional edits, indie publishing, and I have query with a question mark here, um, because honestly, I really hadn't like finalized anything in regards to what I wanted to do for publishing. Uh, even though I was pretty sure I wanted to self-publish, I was like, well, maybe I should look into it and maybe see what querying is about and if I want to do that or not. Obviously, I did not do that. <laughs> Um, and then grow in the community, attend more events, socialize, pick up, play, demos, teach. Um, and this is for a community that I'm involved in in my real life, which you guys may or may not already know. I am part of a BDSM community. And I actually did do a lot of those things. Um, I did attend events. Of course, COVID kind of killed some of that. Um, but I did socialize more and made new friends. And yeah, so it was a good time. And number seven on the list was participate in writing events, which I did do. Okay, guys, I definitely did. I did Camp Nano, Nano. Oof. I did Camp Nano in April and July. Um, I attended the Write Hive, which I believe was in April. It was like a weekend of like informational stuff. Um, and I participated in one of the worldwide author things. God, I can't think of what it's called now. But I participated in a lot of things and I got 
involved in a lot of writing communities. I'm part of several discords now. I'm part of some Facebook groups now. Um, and yeah, so I did a lot of outreach into the community this past year that I hadn't even known about or thought of previously. Um, so I did do that and doing these writing events kind of led to that outreach and yeah, that has been extremely beneficial. If you guys aren't already part of a group or don't already have author friends, seriously, find a community that works for you. Um, the discords that I'm part of are always listed below my videos. So if you wanna check out the Dark Authors Discord or the NaNoWriMo Discord, um, I have them linked below. Um, find friends because having fellow authors doing this with you is like, I don't know, life-changing, I feel like. But yeah. So those were my goals that I had set back in January, like pre-COVID and like, you know, I was working full time at Planet Fitness and I believe in that video I also shared that my goal was to start working towards becoming a full time author um, and that I knew it would take a lot of time to get there and that I was, you know, wanting to save money and things like that so that I could work towards not working a regular full-time job. So that's kind of how the year started off. I also got really sick in January. So let's just like break this down month by month real quick. So in January, I got really sick. I had an ear infection and then I had the flu, which let me tell you, the flu was worse than COVID. Um, <laughs> it was, I had both this year, last year and yeah. Um, the flu, like, I was dying for, like, four days. Like, I had to take all this time off work. Like, it was crazy. Um, anyway, but January I had the flu, and I was working full-time at Planet Fitness. Um, I did do some writing on the draft two because um, draft two of The Reckoning, I basically had written it, and then I uh, re-outlined it, and then for NaNoWriMo in 2019, I rewrote it. But I only got about halfway through the rewrites. So I was continuing those rewrites for the months of January, February, and March. Um, and I think I did finish it in March. I don't know if it was right before or right right around when all of the COVID closures were happening is when I finished it. Um, and, you know, during those three months, I worked at Planet Fitness. I was exercising. I was doing my YouTube um, videos and then I was writing that draft as well as I was studying for my recertification for NASM. If you guys don't know, I am a certified personal trainer um, and so I had to complete some courses for that and that is kind of what I did those first three months. Um, and then the gym closed. <laughs> so the gym closed right around the last week or whatnot of March and I worked at the gym so that means I was off work and unemployed and I instead of you know relaxing and taking time off and enjoying that time to you know I don't know do whatever I wanted to do which I guess I sort of did but what I wanted to do was work for myself so I really dived into that whole let's test drive what being a full-time author would be like um, and I spent April researching my little heart out I researched publishing formatting map making social media marketing all of that stuff I watched videos I read articles I read parts of books like I read so many things and like I had kind of done like an a generic search before like like it's not like I did it I wasn't completely clueless about the process because I did follow other youtubers and I had watched videos about self-publishing and things like that um, but April I really really dived into that and um, I think I was also doing Camp Nano so I was also like trying to outline books two and three a little bit as well um, and then in the month of May, I continued that outlining and ha about halfway through May is when I started my 100k in 25 days challenge, which if you guys haven't seen those videos, I, I have them in a playlist. I can link them below. Um, I wrote a hundred thousand words in 25 days and <laughs> I did it. Um, it took me from like mid-March to like 
mid early June and not surprisingly I actually started going back to work in June so I was very surprised that I still like achieved that goal because you know writing 4,000 words a day while also working my 8 to 10 hour a day job um, was rough but <laughs> I did it and I I basically wrote the first draft of book two and half of the first draft of book three for my series in that month. Um, so I did a lot of writing there. And in May, I also, which is kind of a life achievement, I paid off my car, which I had bought in August of 2019 because my other car crapped out on me. So that was cool. And some of that is because of the the COVID relief check as well as the fact that I made more on unemployment than my employer paid me which is a problem all in itself but anyway so I paid off my car so that was exciting that was a nice little life milestone achievement and then we rolled into June and July in which I was working back at my job at Planet Fitness um, and because I was the manager and we were reopening and obviously we lost some staff, our entire staff did not come back, I was working the 4.30 in the morning opening shift. Um, and let me tell you, it takes its toll on you. I worked that shift for a few weeks and like, honestly, I was in pretty good shape. I had a lot of my employees come back. I was on top of like rehiring, like I was all over it. And it still took, you know, a few weeks before I was back on my normal shift. And then a few weeks was rough, like. And I was writing, because I was finishing that 100K, like, challenge. Yeah. Anyway, so June and July, I was working. I was doing a little bit of writing. I think I revamped my Patreon and was looking into creating my newsletter. I also started Project Infinity, which is my... Um, weekly uh, tapas um, episodic web novel that I'm writing uh, web series it's boy love it's sci-fi it's fun um, and I started doing that because I had gotten into a community which I might have missed out on saying back in April I started looking into author communities and joined those discords and made some friends and guess what when you have friends doing stuff they give you ideas and it like pushes you to do things and so you know I had my two author friends and they had you know they weren't published yet either but they had things that people could read for free on their websites or wherever they had them they had content for people to read and I was like well you know at this point I knew my book wasn't gonna be published for a while because I had scheduled my professional editor back in April when I did research I hired a cover designer and I hired an editor but my editor was, you know, booking so far out that my edits weren't scheduled until, you know, August. So I had this, you know, big, you know, there was going to be a big window of time. I created my publishing plan and there's going to be a big window of time. Um, and so I was like, I want to have something out there that people can read so that they can like see, you know, my writing style and how, what I write and things like that. So I started Project Infinity. And I was also doing some editing and some streaming with my author friends um, and working on that Dark Authors Discord. Uh, so, yeah. And then in August, I kind of continued in the same way. Like August was me like nailing down my weekly content, my weekly YouTube videos, my weekly Project Infinity stuff. I was planning my social media for the months of September and October because... I knew that I was going to get my manuscript back from my editor um, at the end of the month. So at the end of August, I did get my manuscript back from my editor, which meant I had eight weeks to edit it before giving it back to my editor for copy edits because I scheduled back-to-back -back, um, sessions because I, you know, had a publishing timeline that I had set for myself in April when I did all my research. I kind of planned it all out a little bit generically in in a way um, and I've you know been learning every month in that sense and I'll probably do some videos on that eventually but yeah anyway so <laughs> that is what happened in August it was just a lot of social media stuff and then at the end of August I well 
I think August was when I was working part-time at my job. I started working part-time and was able to focus more energy on my writing stuff because let me tell you guys, those like two, three months that I was off work and I was doing full-time author stuff, I loved it. It was literally life-changing for me because not only did I get a ton of stuff done, I learned a ton of stuff. I spent a lot of hours on my, you know, writing career. But like the fact that I did that when I didn't have to or like when I could have done other things, like I could have just spent all my time playing video games or doing stuff, you know, around the house or in the yard or, or whatever. I don't know. I could have been doing whatever I wanted to do and what I wanted to do was right. So it was very, uh, it was very mind opening world, like shifting view in the sense of like, you know, amidst this pandemic where everything has closed and we have to stay home, like, I was definitely not someone who was upset about that. Like, if anything, I learned that I do really well in isolation. I mean, obviously I have my partner, so it wasn't like isolation, isolation, but like, I don't know. I'm okay without having those social interactions, I guess, and, you know, being being home all that time and having all that time to work on the things that I wanted to work on versus working a job that I was slowly becoming more and more unhappy with um, was very, very life-changing. And the fact that I put in all that work um, kind of just like, to me, showed that I do have what it takes to make this a career. Um, that I do have the dedication and the motivation and the drive to do it. So it was eye-opening and me and my partner talked and I went part-time at work. And my work was supposed to find another part-time position for me, um, but they didn't. And all of a sudden they had just replaced me. And so right at the end of August, which was like the day I was getting my manuscript back from my editor, I no longer had a job. Um, and like I said, my partner and I had already talked about this, and so this was not necessarily a, you know, issue financially for us. Um, but yeah, so starting September, I no longer had a full-time job, or a part-time job for that matter, and I spent all of September and October doing developmental edits. Because it took all of that time to do those developmental edits, and like, I didn't know. Like, I had no idea. Like, when I scheduled the time frame between my developmental edits and my copy edits with my editor, I was just like, oh, well, she said four to six weeks for her to edit something this length. And I was like, all right, well, I'll give myself six weeks um, to edit because, you know, it, you know, she's doing it full time and I'm doing it full time. Like, I, you know, I hadn't really done, like, a professional edit before. And the only editing I had done was based off of, like, beta reader feedback. And, like, that didn't take very much time for me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I definitely needed every every minute of every day um, for those developmental edits. My developmental editor did a fantastic job, gave me fantastic feedback, and I spent all of my time devoted to editing that book um, for, like, two months straight. And so, like, come that last week of October, I submitted it back to my editor, and I actually got married, too. Like, me and my partner, like, got married in our house with some official paperwork. Like, we just, like, made it official kind of thing, um, which was sweet and kind of one of those, like, unplanned life event things that happened uh, this year. And, yeah, I was so relieved after getting that manuscript away. Like, ah, oh, it was intense. Developmental edits, guys, give yourself time. Give, give yourself time. Um, to do those but yeah anyway so then going into November I did do NaNoWriMo and I won NaNoWriMo and I have I don't know if I showed you guys earlier but I do have my NaNoWriMo winner shirt on today um, I did win it I was super chill about it because you know in 2019 when I did NaNoWriMo I was working 45 plus hours a week and then writing three hours a week on top of that or three hours a day, like, on top of that, and so, and I, like, worked really hard, like, burning myself through the floor to 
win in 2019. And this year in 2020, like, I don't even know if I, like, was worried about winning. I was just like, oh, 50K words, like, after my 100K 50 days challenge, I was like, oh, that's, like, nothing, you know? Um, so, like, I definitely had a completely different view of it when I came into it in 2020. And I did win. Um, I won on, like, the last day of the month because there were quite a few weekends where I didn't write at all. Like, I went, like, three or four days back-to-back -back without writing. Um, but then I did do a couple of, like, 10K words in a day challenges in which I only got, like, six or seven K max was, like, the max I could do. Um, and I was writing a completely different project. Um, but it was fun. It was, it was a nice break after doing all that editing. It was nice to kind of look at a different project and write a different project um, and kind of like get out of my head and you know I focused, I still did my weekly content and I still was reading um, The Wheel of Time which I finished. Um, I think I finished it at the end of October actually and so I, I took the month of November was kind of like my relaxed month <laughs> for the year of 2020 which is odd because it was NaNoWriMo but it really was like I wrote and I did like my weekly content but like that was it like I did some social media planning in there and, and did my social media stuff but you know I, I took a lot of time to relax and recover from those developmental edits in November um, and then December I got my copy edits back and did not need as much time for those guys um, the copy edits were very much like a I either agree with them or I don't agree with them kind of thing um, and there were only a couple of small details that I needed to like modify um, other than that it was mostly just like read through it which I did I did read through the whole novel and make sure there's nothing missing nothing nothing that didn't get caught kind of thing um, so I definitely did not need that much time after my copy edits before you know doing the formatting except for getting together the information for interior formatting so you know this whole time I'm focused on this book and like my book content and like the novel itself and at no point did I ever think about like the other stuff that you need <laughs> you know title pages dedications acknowledgments author bios which I did actually have one written because I had made it for social media previously um author photos like the back of the blurb stuff, any kind of like taglines, like basically the book front and back matter had like not really registered in my mind before. It's not really something that I had seen a lot of information about, you know, in passing. So that was fun to research and put together because I also had to make a glossary. Yeah. So I did all of that and I, I did get that done by the end of the month and I also started my own publishing company um, which is called Queer SF Books um, because queer sci-fi and fantasy books are what I write um, and what I'll be publishing and maybe I'll publish some other people's you know queer books. We'll see. One day, right? Um, and then I also was doing alpha rating for my critique partner um, for her book. So. Yeah, that is what happened. Oh, and we got a puppy. I, did, I, I can't believe I forgot that. We also got a puppy in December. Um, and obviously the holidays meant traveling to see my family because I did not see them in November because November I had COVID. That's right. That explains why I also didn't get very much done. Um, but yeah, in November we had COVID. So obviously we quarantined for like two whole weeks, which means I went two whole weeks without exercising and I was dying because I wasn't able to exercise, not because of COVID, but because I wasn't able to exercise. Um, but yeah, so that happened in November. And then December, we did go see the family and did the holiday thing. So yeah, that that's a lot. I know I've been going on for like a while now, but that is like my year. Like that is what I did. And you know, it's kind of crazy to look back and see that you know, last year's video, I was like, yeah, I want to make my five-year plan for becoming a full-time self-published author. And well, thank you, COVID, it just kind of happened. Um, and we're going with it. So I am publishing my first novel in April. Um, and my cover is being revealed on the 14th of January, which I think is like 
only a couple days after this video releases so if you guys want to see my cover i'm excited to share it with you guys if you guys want to check out project infinity it is always linked below it's a good time it's free to read over on tabas um and yeah if you want early access to my weekly content if you want exclusive access to some live streams some whatever else i end up putting on there um you guys can check out my patreon it's list it's listed down there below um at some point i am gonna have merch created for my book because it's all about magic and magic shit is cool and magic symbols are cool so i'm gonna make some cool shit for you guys at some point um so yeah that is what i'm doing and 2020 has been insane it has been crazy it has been eye-opening in a lot of ways and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in 2021 as far as my author career and my author business and publishing my book um, because I have a lot of plans for this year and you guys, like, I have a lot of plans. So if you want to find out what they are, check out the next video. Um, but that is all I have for you guys today. I know it was long-winded and I apologize. <laughs> Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like these types of videos, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and I have weekly write-in live streams on Mondays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed your time here in Kayla's World.